It's wonderful to be here. Um, I think we all recognize uh, that there are a huge amount of people who have no access to work at all. Those are not the people I'm going to talk about today. We also see increasingly, including yourself, a lot of people who have very creative ways of escaping the corporation. Those are also not the people I'm going to talk today about. I am going to focus on the ordinary people who work in organisa ordinary organisations, in the public service, uh, hospital, retail, insurance, manufacturing, schools. Do they have meaningful work? How would they know that they had meaningful work? And why would it matter? So to get our heads around that question, I just thought I'd start with a question to you, which is, if you were looking for meaningful work, would you join a pet food company? Yeah. <laughs> and you probably might first go, yeah, I like animals, why not? Um, you know, so you might sort of look at fit, is this a good fit for me? Um, and then, because you're seasoned, mean and thing seekers, you'd probably already quickly go, it depends. But what would it depend on precisely? And what should it depend on? Because that, I think, is a really important question. Under what conditions do we want to merge our own human meanings with organizations? So, would it be enough for you if you got the ability to volunteer once a month in a company-sponsored pet shelter? Would that make it meaningful? Or would you find meaning in the purpose of the company? And I just found one. I thought I'd better look this up, not knowing anything about pet food companies. I found a lovely one. The purpose of this company is to help enrich and lengthen the special relationship between people and their pets. Would that kind of get you going? <laughs> or would you find your meaning in a sense of belonging and appreciation? Uh, from the company, where you all had wonderful get-togethers and where people were genuinely recognized for a job well done. You might even bring along your families and you might even all together sing a pet food song. Would that give you meaning? The sense of being part of this company. Would that give you meaning? Or would it be because the company actually reaches out to the community? and donates 1% of its profit to animal shelters and guide dogs? Or do you seek meaning in a company that addresses bigger issues, such as the obesity, behavioral problems, and rise of designer breeds, all of which are symptoms of the increasing humanization of pets? Or is it meaningful for you to you that a company reduces its own footprint by addressing packaging or energy issues? or the footprint of its core product, pet food, given that a medium-sized dog has the same fo footprint as a small SUV? Or are you saying, actually, there's so much luxury around pets, what I would really like my pet company, food company to do to make it really meaningful is that every can of pet food that we bought, actually a can of food would also go to a human. So really, what do you want to take your company responsible for, responsible for? Where do you get the information on what you want to get, make your company responsible for? How would you need to be engaged in that responsibility yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, in your work, in your day-to-day -day work, to actually experience your work to be meaningful? These are some questions, I think, that we need acute answers to. And uh, we've already heard at this conference and many other places, everybody these days needs to be an economist. I also think that everybody actually these days needs to be an expert on what truly motivates people at work and what should be motivating people at work. The pervasive values of our time is, of course, um, that you don't just invest your physical self in work 
as hot as that can already be, as we see with the Amazon example. And that it's not just enough to um, invest your psychological self in work, but you now also have to invest your existential self in work. You have to find a job that makes you happy, you have to find your calling, very important to find your passion. You do need to find your why, and particularly if you're a leader, it's very important to find your why, and I'm not entirely sure, but that always seems to be written with a capital letter. <laughs> um, and if you are the organization, it has, or has already been spoken about, it is very important to find your purpose. And it is easy to diminish all of this as a bit of another fad. Particularly if you're a critical academic, it is really, really easy to do that. Um, but meaning is not a fad. You know, it, 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 it is not a fad. Meaning is who we are. The research shows that meaning is a fundamental human need. Those who do not have meaning, you know, end up in, in the mental health system or withdraw themselves from a significant others or community. So it is an absolute fundamental need. It's not a nice to have. It is not a luxury. And I think we show prejudices if we say things like, oh, it's of course, a luxury question that white collar workers ask themselves, but it's not so important for blue collar workers. I've done research on that. It is just as important for blue collar workers. So I, don't, I think we need to get rid of some of our own prejudices when we call it as something elitist. It is absolutely fundamental. It is our anchor in, terms of, in times of turmoil, and as just described, we're facing a significant amount of turmoil. It is our place to come home to, a place where we can check into ourselves, make ourselves whole again, and it is our compass when we need direction. <coughs> At the same time, we do see, and could take more seriously, that there is actually a collective wave happening, um, a collective desire uh, to put meaningful work onto the agenda, and I think we need to take that seriously a collective desire to determine a new human bottom line. But the bottom line is not the corporate bottom line, it is our bottom line. On what conditions do we want to give our existential self to work? So, it's a fundamental human need. Um, it represents a collective desire to put our needs for meaning on the agenda. But in a, at an individual level, it is also easy to get disconnected from what is meaningful to us. We are incredibly good at getting lost. We're also incredibly adaptive beings, so we're almost in our desperate need for meaning. We'll kind of grab it wherever it comes towards us. Um, and at a socio-political level, it is very easy, I think, for meaning to be misdirected. So, in that context, and in addition to that, you know, the current quest of meaning emerges in a time, um, in a particular context. So we can't just look at it in an individual level yearning or phenomena. It's happening against the background of acceleration of speed, of us simply not having time to think anymore who we are and what we really want out of life, and not asking the question often enough so that we keep at a very much at a surface level because I think if you ask those questions about what do people really want again and again, you'd also get other needs that would come out. Um, that we um, have a loss of professional autonomy at every level of work, all the way from leaders to um, people at the bottom of the organization who are doing craft work and those sort of things. And of course that we have an existential angst in terms of facing our future. Um, and, and where we are uh, rightly questioning whether all our organizations collectively are really addressing the issues of injustice and ecological meltdown. Um, as 
wholly and as fastly as they should. So, in that context then, some would argue we have a beautiful win-win situation arising. On the one hand, research clearly shows, and this is true, or this is undeniable, that if an individual finds meaning in their work, the organization benefits. They get higher levels of engagement, more commitment, more job satisfaction. Research, too, shows that for you, it is actually much better to find work. If you, work as, if you experience your work as meaningful, you experience increased life satisfaction, more meaning in other parts. It's a spillover effect. If your meaning, work is more meaningful, it is also easier for you to experience meaning in your community or in your family. Um, and in general, your health and well-being improves if you experience meaning. So, in a typical corporate win-win, we could just say that, we, that our search for meaning fixes a problem, um, makes a profit, and can do so in ways that is efficient and consistent, and we can iron out the doubts and dilemmas. We just put two and two together, off we go, happily ever after. But if we buy into this win-win situation, my deep concern is that we are actually handing the meaning agenda over to the organization. And that the moment we do that, meaning, like so many other things before it, will actually die a gentle death. And unlike so many other things before it, that is a real problem. Because it's our last stronghold, it's our last place to stand at the moment. So, meaning is your anchor, and you need to be responsible for it. So what do you need to know to stay responsible for your meaning in the context of work? And being an academic, I just need to make a small disclaimer here, and also, um, actually, because we always do. And the other thing I need to do is apologize, because what academics do, they do research on work, and then they come up with these uh, tech books, uh, which then become the latest fads and actually create a great loss of meaning in your work. <laughs> and so that is not what I am trying to do. Um, what I'm trying to do is just give you some ideas to think about when you think about, is this work meaningful to me? Should I commit myself to it? How much of it myself should I commit to it? Or am I better off to just go there and create all those wonderful community activities and all and love my family and all the other things that we heard about. So, what follows are some research-based considerations to help you understand how meaning might get lost and found and what you might want to look out for if you're looking for aligning your meaning with work. To start with probably one of the biggest questions, Are you actually looking for meaning or purpose? And when you say, I want meaning for work, do you want work that has a purpose, a purpose beyond profit, like my pet food company? I'm becoming a bit attached to my pet food company by now. Um, or are you just talking about the day-to-day -day experiences, the interactions that you have with people, something that enables you to care for another person, something that enables you to discover and express unique talent, um, something that enables you to have a high quality interaction with somebody else at work. I think we need to remember that we're looking for both. There are many organizations, and always have been, that have fantastic purposes. So now all the corporates are in search of purpose. But we've always had organizations where the purpose was blindingly obvious. They never needed to be in search of it. We've had hospitals having wonderful purposes, healing the sick. Objectively, we can all agree we don't need to do a purpose search for that. That is just a great purpose. We've had all educational institutions educating the next generation. Fantastic purpose. But what we also know is that nurses are becoming real estate agents. And at the maximum time a new teacher is working currently as a teacher is 
In New Zealand, it's five years. So something in these purposeful organizations is not working. So we have purpose without meaning. Where objectively people have agreed there is a good purpose and the organization, so, but people don't experience meaning in their daily lives. On the other hand, we have meaning without purpose. And there is um, a lovely study um, that uh, Michael Pratt did a um, long time ago in Mway where he describes how the Mway distributors were encouraged to continually develop bigger, usually more abstract dreams, such as saving the United States and the world through selling Mway products. <laughs> People completely bought into this, right? Because if you, if you put these purposes in front of people often enough, we all have this existential yearning. We, we do want our lives to matter. So if, through my simple M-way job, I don't know if it's simple, it sounds quite complicated to me actually, but if through that job, I actually get connected up to a grand vision where we can actually save the United States, particularly at present, I think that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> this is, you know, um, and in addition to that, the Mway colleagues became your real friends and you could really identify as a plan, part of a clan. These people all said they had deeply meaningful work. Did it have purpose? Probably not. So why, why, what are the implications of some of this thinking? I think one of them is that the whole purpose movement, meaning, I think it's already said, it emerges from the bottom up. And, um, and when, the more we start focusing on purpose and the more we sometimes lose all the things that are giving people meaning in the here and now. And so it's really important that when you help organizations, and I think that's what the job is of several of yours, to identify their purpose, all those type of things, that you actually focus on what people are experiencing in their daily work. That, that I think, is one. Another thing here is that we need both big and little meanings. At some level, we would all like our work to really matter. And at some level, the stories that we tell each other and the things that make us feel more good are often about the small meanings. You know, they're just going to a soccer match of a child. They're looking after a parent. They're having a slightly longer conversation with somebody in a, in, in a retail shop. Or if you are a retailer, actually the retailers of the wonderful research work of um, Adrian Madden and Katie Bailey, they, their stories about meaning were all that they took five minutes, somewhere extra, to have a conversation with a lonely customer. And they know them because the, you know, they could identify these people coming back in. And the organization had said that that was okay, that they could spend time on that. Those are little meanings. They're not earth shattering, they're not changing the world, but they hold us together on a day to day basis. If we're not held together on a day to day basis, like the nurse, like the teacher, we cannot serve that bigger purpose. On the other hand, we shouldn't fool ourselves that that is just enough if the bigger purpose is saving the United States through Amway. Another question or, or something that I think is, is useful for consideration is this whole question. Who provides meaning for work? Because somehow this whole meaning conversation seems to have been hijacked or at least emerged at the same time that we have become incredibly interested in leadership. There are schools of books on leadership, uh, leadership training, billions of dollars literally go into that. Um, we, we identify the young leadership potentials and they get separate treatment in the organization. There's an awful lot. And then we kind of say, well, it's not really about the leader and it's about leadership and we can all share that, but it doesn't quite do it, does it? Because there is a class of people 
who somehow seem to have this conversation around meaning and a class of people that somehow seems to not have it. So some interesting research here, and the role of leaders is, is often mentioned, is not often mentioned spontaneously. So if you ask people about meaningful work, it's not that the first thing say, well, my leader came to me and set this grand vision, and man, the blankets went off, and I, you know, I saw the light. And from that moment onward, it became meaningful. Actually, they did, uh, had 12 professions, and almost nobody ever mentioned a leader. <coughs> kind of interesting. Also, leaders are often at a loss for meaning themselves. Research shows that. That leaders do not have a better understanding of what makes a meaningful life than anybody else has. And, um, and often, when they face problems for which they are painfully unprepared, um, so as at currently Facebook, they find solutions in technical or other places, but, but are very hard, very, are not very good at actually addressing the existential questions underpinning the issues facing the organization. There are many exceptions, wonderful exceptions, but we're talking our general ordinary organization here. What we do know is that leaders are very good at destroying meaningful work. Quite a bit of research on that. Uh, by confining people, by um, just when you're on track and you're doing something that's meaningful to you, you know, moving, it, moving you in some other direction. Um, um, by stopping questioning, like, like, for instance, you know, my pet food shop uh, manufacturer, uh, what leaders are very good is, is that I would, in all my questioning, I probably just could get to the environmental footprint of the organization itself. So leaders are good at confining the organization and not so good at addressing the next lot of questions we always inevitably want to ask when we get engaged in conversations of meaning. Our mind starts expanding and then we go, what about this? What about the fact that we're actually starting to humanize all this human? And what about the fact that pet food is taking up so much of the planetary resources? What about the fact uh, that people are paying 10 times as much uh, for a can of cat food uh, that they're not spending on other necessities? Uh, you know, what, what's happening here? So leaders often let you go so far in a conversation and, and then confine what you can say. Um, Having said that, of course leaders can, because they're in positions of power, and let's, let's not deny that. They can help you make connections, they can care for you, they can remove obstacles to work, um, and that does make an enormous difference. But that makes a difference not because they better understand what is meaningful than you do, it makes a difference because they have more resources at their disposal to make meaning happen and to remove obstacles to it. So I think in this leadership conversation, we need to be very careful that we are not unwittingly creating another class of have-nots and haves in what is almost the final frontier of being human. Okay, time for a couple of other questions. Does meaningful work require a relative measure of flexibility and participation? I think we already talked about and the capacity to build democracy through work. Um, and I think this is important. If you ask yourself, you're working with an organization, you want to create meaning, this would be one of the first questions I would ask myself. Is this organization creating the capacity for democracy in me? Would it give us the capability to find our voice, to advocate, to resist, to organize, would it do these type of things? I think that is really important. Partly it is important because of this learning these skills. Well, there is a lot of research that shows there's a spillover effect. So if we learn some of these skills at work, they spill over in all other areas of our lives. And on the contrary, if some of those skills are crushed at work, then we struggle to take them out of the head in the other areas of our lives. So work really does have a responsibility there, and we need to hold them to account on that basis. 
Um, there is uh, quite um, what is meaningless, and there's been research being done on that as well, is bogus empowerment. And somebody was already just talking also about fake democracy. Uh, we know when we're being fooled. You know, so, so, so it's almost better than to just say to people, this is how it is. If you don't like it, just live through the day and express all of those ideals in other parts of your, world, of your life, rather than getting, gathering all that energy. But in the end, the person still cannot express who they truly are, not sound a unique note in the universe, not connect with the necessary others that they need to have around them, and not make the difference that they really want to make. Another thing around flexibility and participation that is important is it is not enough for people to have a company with a purpose. Even if that's a great purpose and even if you totally believed and it wasn't purpose washing, even with all of those, for people to experience meaning, they need to be connected to that purpose and make a difference in their daily lives. So that is true, you know. How do you organize? How flat does your organization need to be that everybody is connected in one way or the other to say that customer or that client or that patient that you're making a difference to? These are really questions we need to start asking ourselves. How can we be more organic, more flexible, so that we can connect people to what in managerial times you would call the end user, but from a meaning perspective, is the person who feeds back to you that what you're doing is actually truly meaningful? So questions to ask, we know that empowerment and power and democracy is frustrating. We need to build the skills. I think there's a workshop here for Buurtzorg and you know, it's, um, it's um, not always that easy, and, but we do know how to do it. So how much power are your superiors willing to give away would be something I would ask if I looked for meaningful work, but also how much responsibility am I willing to take in the context of work? Another qu quick question is whether it's meaningful to be positive at work. The, the meaningful work movement has been very much hijacked by the positive psychology movement. And I say, at some level, rightly so. Uh, we do need to start working at what works. And uh, particularly the young generation, the next generation, um, they, we know that they don't respond well, for instance, to politicians who keep telling them what is not working or who keep telling them what is wrong with all the other politicians. They just go, get on with it, will you? What, you know, and we've just recently seen that in, in New Zealand, where there's just such a breath of fresh air because we have politicians at the moment who are just focusing on the agenda and where they are taking us rather than all the other stuff. So I think that is very important. We need to be constructive and meaning is a constructive conversation. At the same time, and Buddhists know this better than anybody, and I'm not a Buddhist, but I've just spent some time in Sri Lanka um, doing workshops and, uh, on meaningful work. Um, meaning comes from facing the struggle. And I think if we are too glossy and too positive, and this tends to also be a bit of a thing around leadership. If you're very positive, you get those positions. Um, if you have too much of a bias towards positivity, you are not facing the not knowing. You're not facing the half-baked ethical decision which you inevitably made. You're not facing the relational discomfort. And in not facing that, you're actually completely denying meaning. Because you're making it unreal. So, quickly then, in what life should work be the primary source of meaning? I think at a time where we, a lot of um, who we are gets absor absorbed by our work, I do think we need to ask that question. Because we are living at a time where never has, has so much identity been tied up in paid work for so many people around the world. Um, and that argument is, well, we're spending so much waking hours at work, so we might as well have, make it meaningful, kind of. And I don't know if that is the right question to ask. Um, the research shows you will have a lot more meaning if you bet on more than one horse. Because meaning comes and goes. Research shows it's episodical. We don't, it's not a constant in our lives. So it might come in your family and disappear in your work. It might disappear in your work and come in your community. So you need for your sanity, you absolutely need to find work, meaning 
across different life roles and different life responsibilities. So that also is very important in here. Also, you don't, shouldn't just have one meaning that you use, like if your meaning is that you're really good at um, helping people to organize, become a collective, it's good to use that in one place, like work, but then not in a community or not at your daughter's um, uh, tennis court. So, you know, try to think about meanings as multiple meanings. And, and if you're good at driving something in one place, look at the meaning of caring for something in another place or connecting to people in another place. So you have to have multiple places to express multiple meanings because ideally you can express all of those at work, but that is not often possible. So in summary then, Sorry about that. Will the current quest for meaning lead to reclaiming our humanity at work? I think meaning is important, but it can be co-opted in many very subtle ways. I really think we're at a stage where we can go gently into that good night in the captivity of the organization. That it can be used toward instrumental purposes, um, where there's be a lot of talk about meaning and purpose, but we actually disconnect rather than connect. At the same time, it can, I think, be a roar. It can be a new place from which we set the agenda, for which we as humanity set the agenda for organizations and test every organizational practice, every organizational idea, every organizational purpose by our own meaning. So, and I think there is, there is the potential at this particular time to actually really start a movement for meaning and, create, and claim back our humanity. To, that, to do that, paradoxically, even though we need to create meaning together, we will start, first start to have to take true responsibility for our own meaning and I think understand it a lot better what it is and what makes it tick than we currently do. That is all I want to share with you today. <laughs>